hello guys welcome to new video today in this video i am going to uh, create a server from a scratch in c++ so basic motive of this video is uh, to give a idea about how internally servers are working so this is the basic motive of this video so that's why i selected c++ to create the server which will be going to handle get request uh, from the client side so you can use clients like browser or a postman to send a get request so we are going to only handle right now get request uh, if you request more about more about it so we will create more uh, like post and other stuffs also uh, but still i am going to today in this i am going to create today in this video only get request server which will be going to handle get request so this is the whole idea of the today's video so let's get started and let's create a server so so i have basically written some uh, code uh, where uh, i have created one server.cpp file and i have included some uh, libraries i will tell you uh, what this libraries means so first i have included a uh, one uh, library is called as hash include bit slash standard c++.h is basically uh, used to include all the standard libraries basically like uh, io stream which is a standard library then uh, we have vector or any kind of algorithms or a data structure will be included by using this library that's why i use that thing uh, you can use simple things also but i use this thing then uh, we need a one socket library uh, so i use system socket dot h library so i included that system forward slash socket dot h then we need a uh, a library to convert the incoming uh, request uh, into the form of addresses so that we can uh, understand from where it's uh, that request is coming so we need this library uh, we will going to type cast uh, it's like a casting into the form of address so we need this library actually the that is called a net i net uh, forward slash in dot h library uh, then we have header file actually they are header files then we have a uh, last library which is unistandard dot h dot h actually so unistandard dot h why it is it will be going to use uh, these are the operations send receive uh, send uh, read and close the socket so send means send the data to this uh, client side and read the data from the client side these are the two operations and three operation actually for that this last unistandard is used so these are the three header files four header files we need now let's get started for the main code so i will create a main return zero so now our target is what uh, we need to create we need to create a server server which will be going to handle which will handle get request okay get request we will be going to handle get request okay get request from client from client this is the motive of this video and we will going to get more depth knowledge about how servers are working so okay this is the main idea so i will tell you how these things will be going to work so before that i will show you the these are the clients whatever the browser i am using uh, browsers are the client for this this, this server or a postman or any kind of uh, thing you can use for a client and uh, the, this that is one thing and uh, let's create a server now for to create a server first few step we need to do first thing is that we need to first create a socket initialize socket initialize socket i will tell you one by one initializing a socket so how we are going to initialize a socket i will tell you so there is a socket function there is a socket function and this function is coming from this library sys socket dot h i will show you if you click on this you will see socket dot h right socket dot h how i am going from uh, this uh, function to that library you need to just click on uh, control button and if you hover you will see um, instead of arrow there is a pointer if you click on it you will land up to that code actually right now i can see how that function is uh, implemented like definition of that function so this is the definition uh, so i see one thing we need to give one domain uh, next thing is the type of that domain and a protocol right so how this uh, thing is working there is a written thing here also like if uh, you specify protocol means this value as a zero 
automatically it will be going to assign some protocol right so that is the things so we need to first give domain domain right as you seen here we need to first give domain domain is basically what domain is basically we are going to define which kind of uh, ip address system we are we going to is, uh, use right like uh, ip version 4 we will be going to use or uh, ip version 6 we will be going to use so i will define so if you want to use ip version 4 okay ip version 4 so for to use that we need to use if underscore i net if underscore i net this is the thing for uh, if underscore i net we need to use for ip version 4 uh, this basically defined the family of version 4 ip addresses if you want to define a family of version 6 ip address we need to use what i will tell you af underscore similar thing just we need to specify at the last 6 so this is for the ip version 6 so we need to give this information like i am i am going to use ip version 4 addressing system so i will share uh, create a address for a ip version 4 kind of system and then i need to listen for a tcp connection for to listen for a tcp type of connection because any kind of request you are sending to the server it's kind of tcp tcp is a kind of protocol which is called as a transmission transmission control protocol trans uh, transmission control protocol uh, control protocol protocol okay transmission control protocol so tcp so for to use for to say like tcp so computer don't know about tcp so we need to use socket sock underscore uh, i will show you uh, it's not suggesting there so that's why i'm going to use sock underscore it will be like uh, stream stream is used for uh, tcp kind of connection if you want tcp kind of connection you will be used you will be going to use sock underscore t uh, stream and if you want udp kind of connection udp means user datagram protocol uh yeah user datagram protocol or something like this uh currently i'm not remembering the proper name but is uh, it's kind of user datagram protocol so for do that uh we will be going to use sock sock underscore dgram so sock underscore dgram is used for udp connection if you want to create a udp type of connection you will be going to use sock underscore dgram if you want to create a tcp type of connection you will be going to use sock underscore s stream that's it let's go for uh, next thing we need to specify protocol which kind of protocol we will be going to use let's define zero zero means what it, it uh, this function socket function will be go going to define automatically that's it so after this operation it will be going to return me something so let's check what will be going to return it will return file descriptor or otherwise minus one in case of any error so let's create a, a variables i will define here variables variables so let's define some variables so i need it will be going to return me integer kind of thing right so i need integer which will be basically server socket i will name it as a server socket descriptor or uh, something like that you can name it let's name it server socket I will store this output server socket equal to this thing and I know if server socket value is lesser than 0 means minus 1 means what it it is having some error right so I will handle that thing server I will say server socket if its value is lesser than 0 means minus 1 so I know there is some error so I need to display that error right so we can use C error C error uh c error wait c error oh okay c error we will be going to use uh why it's not finding out that thing c error or we can use c out actually yeah c out we can use c out and we can say uh socket connection error socket connection error we have socket connection error that's it and we will going to end l yeah end 
so this is that thing what happened see how it is not identified by okay because of using namespace std is not included standard things are there so we need to include that so we can use now c error also c error c error is like uh, to show the any kind of errors we can use c error uh, otherwise c out is also fine we can use c out also let's use c out it's fine if there is some error we will be going to return that program means uh, we will be going to terminate that program because we have some error right we will be going to terminate that program okay that's it okay this thing is done we have created the socket we have initialized the socket first thing is done socket initialization is done now we need to listen for all the ip addresses to our server right we need to listen for the all the ip addresses to the server so we need to create one thing now we need to bind 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 address to socket this thing we need to do what bind address to socket we need to bind whatever the address coming from the uh, uh, what i can say client side we need to bind it to our socket whatever this socket is we need to bind that thing right so that we can create a connection right so let's bind that thing before that we need an address right so this is the second time binding but for that we need address so first thing is this let's create an address create an address okay so how we will be going to create an address so for to create an address so we need to use one thing struct uh, basically it's called as a sock address so let's get suggestion sock address uh, why it's not suggesting me okay sock address okay sock let me go here then if it's not suggesting i will go here and i will find out the sock address sock socket length you will see the definitions uh where is that okay socket address yeah socket address sock addr we need to use sock addr so we will just paste that thing underscore why it's not suggesting me right now i don't know let me check there is some issue um sock address dot underscore in and let's create a variable address that's it so we have this address i will check it's exist or not it's exist right so this is the structure this is the structure we are will going to use for to create an address this is the structure which will defined by internally uh internally is defined by using this uh, library uh net i net uh, slash in dot h that's why in dot h uh, in this it's automatically defined for to we just need to define for our convenience like we need to uh, change this port number to uh, whatever the port number we want we need to change this address to internet address ip address what we want and that's it we need to define these things so i have access that uh, structure using added address variable now i can redefine that things like uh, first i need to specify which kind of family which kind of uh, family ip4 family i'm going to use i'm going to use ip version 4 family for to specify that i already told you ifinet is there right so i am going to tell ifinet i have family of ip version 4 then in address we need to define more things like i will show you uh, in this code also you can see we need to define scene port address and scene address right so i will first define scene address so scene address dot s address basically now we can define address so let's define address so how we can define uh, i will say i need to accept any kind of request which is coming from the clients right any kind of ip address we need to accept so how i can define here any kind so for to define any kind there is one variable which already defined uh, that called as any i will show you any uh, okay uh, in suggestion there is any right this is that variable in any address uh, like this is that thing input any kind of address like you can accept any kind of request by using this 
so we need to accept any kind of ip address which is it will be client ip address any client we need to connect that's why any uh, any so now we have that address also now we need to define a port in uh, on which port client should be get connected right in on which port client should be get connected so we need to define that port so let's first define which port we need to define so we i will be going to use define keyword i will say port let's say 3000 that's it i need to listen for a 3000 ports so i will be going to add port should be equal to whatever the port i have but i can't i cannot directly assign that port to convert this port address into a uh, suitable format so that it can be understandable in any kind of system so for that we have htons something htons we have htons which will basically help you to convert whatever the port address we have given into the one kind of format which will be unsigned integer 16 bytes unsigned integer 16 byte which will be going to convert whatever the IP, uh, port number you will be going to give so it will be common for any kind of machine you will be going to use so that's why we need to use htons so i will now specify port so it will be going to convert uh, in specific format which will be same for any kind of machine now machine so now we have set up the address we have address whatever the ad, uh, client will be going to come we need to assign this address right so that it's set up now we'll be bind that address to socket so that whatever that uh, client is connecting it will be binded to our socket right so now we will be going to bind now we need to read bind api bind function actually i must say so bind function bind function what bind function text i will show you let's go in a socket in socket there is a bind function i will type bind and in that bind you can see how this bind function definition is look like so bind function definition take a fi uh, file descriptor file descriptor is nothing but whatever the socket we have created or whatever the socket we have created this is the file descriptor i will show you if you hover on that you can see it will return what file descriptor right so this is the file descriptor so we need to pass that thing and after that we need to pass address what is the address we have created that address right here we need to pass that address and you can check what is the type of it this is that this will be the type of it okay the great and then what next thing we need to pass length of that address so let's create the length of that address let's calculate the length of address so i have this address right so i will calculate the length of address so uh, it, it will be in teaser format so i will say server address length iddr length it, it will be equal to size of size of this address right size of this address that's it we have this thing now we have server address length so that's why okay let's say address length it should be address length actually address length we have address length also now we will be going to use bind function so we need to first first thing is that in on which socket we need to bind so this is the socket right i need to bind to this socket this is the file descriptor and next thing we need to pass is that uh, let's go in this function and uh, next is we need to pass address so i need to pass address right address but address is having type what sock address uh, sock address underscore in but we need which kind of type this kind of type right this kind of uh, pointer we need so we will type cast that uh, that data type this is the actually the structure type into into this kind of uh, format right so to type cast that thing we will be going to use type casting and we will just press this thing sock address star and as we know this is the pointer so we need to pass address so we will pass address of this address right that's it we will be going to pass address that's it now we need to pass what uh, length of this address so i will be going to pass length of the address now we have bind function ready bind api is ready right now we have binded that whatever the request address is coming uh, to the uh, socket to the socket we have bind that so binding is here now binding is completed okay okay we have second step uh, we have second step now bind 
binding is completed bind socket to address so which address we are binding any kind of address any kind of address we are listening so address means what uh, i am referring to ip addresses right so that thing we have done but what it will be going to return it will be going to return integer okay and okay that, that will be basically length okay i will check one thing uh, if this binding is true if this binding is true means what it will be not going to uh, go into lesser than zero length right because length is not always uh, cannot be zero if it is lesser than zero means what there is something error let's show that error right binding error binding error okay fine great we have this thing also and then so and after i will go be going to return because there is no point to go further in the program so we have done with two steps like first create a socket so that any connection can come and bind to that socket right any connection from the client can bind to that socket that's why we have created socket and our wire address is needed so that we can convert whatever the address coming from the client to specific format which is required to the uh, R system or uh, R C plus plus program. So I converted that. I hope you understand this how is internally working, how we understood like what things we need to pass. It's basically internally the structure we need to create like it's already created. Just we need to define the values for the their variables. So we defined variables value and here we specified like any kind of ip address we can listen uh, port address should be converted into a specific format we have converted that using htons it's a basically a function and uh, then we have scene family there we specified we will be going to use ip version 4 that's it we have defined that things now let's go for a next step what is the next step after binding this uh, request what we need to do we need to do like uh, whatever the connection is coming we need to listen for that connection now we need to listen listen for the connection listen for the connection 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 on port on port port whatever the port we have specified above that's why so listen let's listen on that port so listen function is accepting what whatever the uh descriptor file descriptor you have created and the number of as you can read here prepare to accept the connection on socket file descriptor we have created that socket file descriptor n is the number of requests whatever the n is here is the number of requests will be queued before further requests are refused means what any request is not uh, accepted then how much requested should be queued right that we need to specify in the second parameter and after that if it is having a success it will return a zero otherwise it will return minus one so okay okay great so uh, what do we need to do we need to pass first past pass first uh, this server socket because it needs a server socket descriptor so we have that now we need we will say three let's say three is the queuing uh, queuing limit uh, so we have specified that thing also now I will check if this will be going to return me lesser than zero then I know there is something wrong right so I will say uh, listen error listen error okay that's it and handle and I will return from the program because there is no point to go further in the program program is already terminated that's it so we have terminated that program now fourth thing we need to do fourth thing we need to do what what is the fourth thing we have listened for the connection now we will accept that whatever the request is coming we will accept that request we will listening uh, server is listening listening if any request comes we need to accept right whatever the listening thing is there we need to accept that request so that we can bind right so we need to accept that request so we will accept accept request so I will request I will going to accept that request how I will going to accept there is an accept function the present accept API actually we, we can say or a function so if I go into that API or a function 
we can see the definition of it what it means y int uh, x turn is written x turn returns for uh, to convert into the c type of uh, uh, like constraint it's it's imposing c type of constraint that's fine oh uh, forget about that let's see the definition we need to pass file descriptor file descriptor means what socket whatever the socket you created and whatever the thing you got from that we need to pass to it and then we need to pass what address we have seen address also now we need to pass next thing is length of that address which will be in the form of socket a uh, length uh, type of pointer so we will create that thing right let's create so what we are accepting here we are accepting sir uh, client address right we are accepting client address here so we need to create one more thing this is the server address we have defined it will be going to listen any kind of ip address from the client okay now we need to define uh, server client ip address also client address also so client i will say cl client address addr client address it will be of same type so i have defined that we need we don't need to define this skin uh, things it will be automatically taken from the uh, this like request only from the client request only so i will say here accept uh, i need to accept on a socket uh, address also i need to accept on a server socket actually server sockets comma okay uh, whatever the request is coming i need to accept on a server socket and address will be address address will be client address because whatever the address you are passing from the client i will take into the client address and it will be type casted into the format of given format like this kind of format i will type cast it into that format and now we need to pass length of that address like right? length of that address but as you can go uh, if you go inside of it you will see length should be in the format sock length t uh, type right sock length t type so i will go into create here sock length t type type of client uh, length client address length equal to size of client address that's it we have now that address now we need to pass this uh, as a form of address because it's a pointer it's a pointer right it's a pointer that's why I need to pass the address of it. So we have passed that address. Now we have accepted the connection. Now we have accepted the connection. If you accept the connection, you will be get new socket descriptor. New socket descriptor. Why will we get new socket descriptor? I will tell you. I will get client socket now. I will get client socket now. I will get client socket. Why we require client socket? So to send request to that client, because we need to send request to that client. How we will going to send the request? We need client socket now so that we can send whatever the request we have to the client right so we need a client socket so that whatever the thing we need to send we will uh, hand over to that socket and that request will be going to uh, get to the that client side right so this is the idea that's why we need a new socket so accept will be going to give new kind of socket okay new kind of socket we got it perfect we are done with this thing so it's also saying some error because let's go in bind and see why it should be also in type of sock length t type we are defined into the format of integer let's change the type we have changed now it should be fine uh, now it should be fine now it should be fine let's go again uh, and it's not a point pointer actually so it's not a pointer perfect it will be going to solve actually it's not a error it's a some kind of issue actually yeah here is the issue it's fine so we have defined entire thing properly okay now we have accepted that thing so we have client address now client socket now okay now we can perform send and receive operation now we can perform fifth step is send and send and read or a close close so let's close first all things let's close all things close close let's close all thing let's close let's close the uh, first thing is like 
server socket let's close the server socket let's close a uh, uh, client socket client socket okay and that's it we have closed everything so these are the two sockets are closed but we have not sent uh, any data to the whatever the client is requesting we need to send some data right so let's send some data uh, okay how will you going to send uh let's receive from first data let's let's read first let's read read data from client okay that's it okay we have now read data how to read there is a read function from where i am getting this function from this thing uh uni standard it's giving me that function close is also defined here now we need to pass what uh read function let's go into that read function want function descriptor uh, file descriptor actually and then we want buffer buffer of uh, array actually it's a pointer uh, where we can store the data which is coming from the client side that is called as a buffer buffer is nothing but a simple uh, characters array character array it's called as a buffer character array is a buffer and then we need a size of that buffer size of that buffer okay that's it okay we know now basic information now we need to first create buffer so in variable section i will going to create a buffer uh, let's create a buffer let's say i already said buffer is nothing but what it's a character it's a uh, stream of character that's why we need a character array let's say name is as buffer and size of it will be let's say i will define here has include okay has define actually has define uh, let's define the buffer size buffer buffer size it it will be let's say 2000 or 1024 you can send it at any time you can send it any time so let's say i have this kind of 1024 size of uh, characters i am accepting that much character only so okay that's it we have that thing uh, okay let's go below now in this we need to fast uh, pass what read from where we need to read client socket or uh, from the server socket we need to read from what we need to read from the client socket so i will pass your client socket not not server socket because data is present on which socket client socket that's why we are passing client socket we need to read data from the client socket that's why now what we need to pass after reading that data we need to store into what we need to store into the buffer okay buffer Bu buffer why i'm not uh, passing the address because array uh, variable name if you pass array variable name it's basically a address only that's why we need to we don't need to specify address like address it's automatically treated as address only now next thing is that size of that buffer i already defined as size so i will say buffer size here buffer size okay that's it buffer size is also defined here okay that's it we have read we have read now uh read is also defined before that we forgot about one thing if this client socket get failed so i'm not handle that i have not handled that so lesser than zero uh then we need to say like client socket failed see out client socket client socket failed right that's it you can uh, you can define any kind of uh, error currently i'm just for to showing purpose i'm defining that kind of let's do it yeah that's it we have to uh, handle that error also if there is some error in connection accepting that uh, client request we can show this client socket error that's it uh, we have read the data let's see out that data then see out uh, client data or we can directly show it uh, let's say buffer buffer let's say directly buffer or a client data we can add extra thing also if you want client data let's say and whatever the inside of the buffer we need to show it and end that's it okay now we will going to see buffer data whatever the data coming from the server client actually uh, we will going to see now what next thing we need to do 
after reading that data we need to some we need to send some response to it right so we will send we will be going to send some response let's do it send uh what we need to send some response right so uh let's go into that we need for descriptor then uh, in send let's go we need what descriptor file descriptor which will be basically client descriptor so because we need to send data to whom we need to send to client we need to send to client so that's why we need a client descriptor here right next thing is what uh we need a buffer we need a buffer of a data right uh so that what thing we need to send it's a buffer okay okay got it next things uh whatever the size of the buffer is okay it's fine let's go so before that uh i need to introduce one more concept uh if you want to send a uh, data to any browser so browser is following which kind of uh, uh, protocol http protocol right so we need to pass that data into the format of http header uh, response header we are going to send a response to the client right so we need to uh, first create a header format so i will uh, just search response header example we will see this uh, uh, beautiful image actually uh, which will be going to tell you about how response are look like so we need to construct this kind of response so let's create a function which will be going to create this kind of response and uh, so that we can send it to the client otherwise client will be not available to understand because browser cannot handle uh, without a header because it's following this HTTP protocol that's why we need uh, that thing so I hope you understood why we need response header okay so that any client uh, which is follow uh, which is following uh, HTTP, HTTP type of protocol that's why we need it uh, so let's define a function here uh, which will be going to create a response so let's name it as a response and it will be going to return me a string uh, okay string uh, create response create response okay we have to create response okay that's it uh, it will be going to accept what things uh, as you can see here uh, we will be not going to give cont uh, content encoding we will be going to use thing, uh, some things like HTTP this thing is important so that uh, whatever the client is uh, going to know about I am going to use HTTP type of response then uh, we need to use content type which type of content content I am going to send I am going to send a text type of content and we will be going to use content size what is the content length so content length these are the three things we are going to we will be going to use other things will be not going to use right so let's create so we need to create this kind of string so let's create it so what we can do uh, say response is equal to string response equal to uh, one string which will be basically HTTP HTTP forward slash 1.1 200 1.1 uh, 1 .1 is basically HTTP version uh, what is here 200 okay 200 okay means there is no any issue there is no any issue there is no any issue that's it we have this thing uh, okay after that we need to go into the next line we need to go into the next line how we are be going to how we'll be going to into next line we need to use forward slash r forward slash n what is the meaning of forward slash r forward slash r means i need to go in, uh, i need to go into next line but starting of the line starting of the line let's say this is the entire text starting of the line is what here is the starting of this uh, sentence so forward slash uh, backward slash r means we need to go into the starting of line in next line in next line we need to go on the starting of the line okay that's it after that in next line let's say i am going to write next string which will be automatically going to concatenated we don't need to specify then we need to use what content type we need to specify a content type C is capital right content type right content I think they have given yeah here is the thing where is that content type yeah let's copy this thing let's copy let's paste it here okay content type 
we need to specify colon right content type then colon yeah then text slash html we need to send html so text slash html text slash html or uh, plain text let's say by default it is a plain text or otherwise we can take a parameter we can take a parameter which will be defined by the user only so we'll, we will write a uh, string type content type content type you need to send me content type and whatever the content type sent by the client uh, sent by the while calling the function i will accept that thing and after that there will be space forward slash r forward slash backward slash actually backward slash n so that i can go into the next line uh, next lines first uh, number uh, that's why so that's it but i forgot plus sign that's it uh, it's not done okay now we are in the next line okay we don't need a space here that's it let's create next thing next thing is what okay i guess it's too much time consuming but it will be very very uh completing soon uh now we want content length so we'll specify content length here content length colon actually it's colon right yeah colon and how we can get the length of the content uh it's basically what we are going to send a response right so we need some content so let's create string content length so length is basically integer format right int int content uh okay how we can get a length uh we will going to say int content length content length we will be accepting that length from the user only content length will be going to pass here i will specify here content length that's it and again that backwards less r so to go into the first character here first pointer and backwards less n to the next line next line first pointer that's it uh, it will be in string format okay that's it okay now we need to specify the actual content what is the content is uh, so i will going to accept string string uh, string content actual content what is the actual content is so before that if you want to specify any kind of contact we need to specify first backwards slash r backwards slash n after that we can specify actual content body so we will write here content content that's it so content that's it it's done we have now content also uh okay okay what happened okay it's a we need to convert into the string format so two string i can write two string two string whatever the integer we have it should be in the string format so integer will be going to convert it into string format and i will return this response now we have constructed response response okay that's it and we need to return right return so we have response now we will call this function to send a response to the user we need to send a response so first we will create that string 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 uh response data response data how we'll be going to get for using this uh, create response function what we need to specify content type uh let's say content type is uh, uh text forward slash html type we will be going to send html and uh, now we need to specify actual length of the content so before that let's define a content either string content is equals to html content let's say let me write html content content equal to let's define that let me write some html code here uh, let's go html dot html let's create that thing right go okay i will copy from uh, html thing and let's share right one header h1 header 
hello that's it i will copy this uh, thing without this header let's remove this header i just need this thing i will copy and uh, here i will paste that okay let's correct it okay 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 now it's perfect string okay here is a problem i mean it specify in or otherwise we cannot uh, we didn't we, we don't need the en okay it's fine now we specify length how we will be going to get the length of it uh length can be find out by using html content dot size or uh, length length is a function just or we can use str length function and we need to specify specify html content that's it it will be going to return me length of the uh what happened uh let me check uh okay it's accepting it's not a string uh it's accepting a character array character okay so character html content now it's accepted that thing now we need to specify what whatever the actual content is so let's define it in string format only it's fine string and uh, we will be going to calculate the size by using html dot length whatever the length we have we have calculated now uh, we need to send actual content uh, actual content is this let's send this actual content now we will get response data now we have response data now we can send that so let's do it response data so before that we need what descriptor so we need client descriptor we need to send it to client that's why client socket we need on client socket we need to send what buffer response data we need to send okay uh, but it should be into the format of address so let's give address of it okay and now size of it size from where we will get uh, size of the buffer actually we want right so size of buffer will be going to calculate it by using this formula uh, let's add it here html dot length that's it there is one more variable i guess okay we need to specify flag let's say it's a zero returns the number send zero or one okay we have specified this flag also so we have sent some data to the client also now okay that's it it's done server code is done but it will be not going to run uh, because I am I am not using while loop, so it will be going to run only first time, and after that it will be going to end. Uh, where it will be going to stop? It will be going to stop here. Accept. Here it will be come. It will come and stop. Before that, let's add some things. Before accepting, let's say here I am going to write. I am listening on the port. So after listen, let's if properly listening, let's add one C out. C out. Uh, connected okay listening on listening on local host http colon forward slash local host colon 3000 okay listening on this that's it and then and after accepted and there is no any error means what we have connected right see out client connected client client connected that's it and let's do end l and that's it is done and okay let's run this code now everything is fine i guess so far yeah it's learning it's running right it's listening on a port let's run now if i go here and let's type localhost 3000 and if i run uh what happened it's not got any response because but we have we have got any uh we have read the data as you can see read data it's type of get request you can see get request uh it's, it's coming from this host this kind of thing is present here 
but we not got data because code is going uh, got ended that's why we not got the data so let's add it into a loop so we need to add this entire thing because we need to accept multiple client so this thing should be also in loop so let's add it into loop while one one means um, until i press something let's say while i am not pressing something right let's say add uh, okay 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 let's say while one i am doing that thing uh and let's copy these uh, things up to this thing let's cut from here and let's paste it here and let's do a document formatting uh, okay let's do a document formatting okay now we will be going to accept always and check it's connected read that data and send the response after sending the response we will close that socket we will close client socket as you know after sending we need to always close that socket so that uh, there will be no state saved uh, as you can know http is not uh, connected always connected after sending a request after getting a response connection get lost lost right so we need to close that socket that's it and uh, after this loop end we will close this uh, this socket also that's it let's go now let's run now let's see how it's working we have connected let's do it what happening it's connected but it's not receiving any response uh, it is so let's go let's debug this why it's not accepting response let's inspect in network tab if i go if i run this code uh we are not ex receiving any response how let me check let me check just a second while sending there is a, some error while sending there is some error actually while sending i am sending a response data we need to send a buffer actually let's see let's see a code we need to send a buffer okay uh, okay 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 so we need to convert this uh, thing to a buffer okay means a character array actually whatever the string data is uh, we want into the character format because we need to send a buffer so buffer is always in character format so we need to create a character uh, pointer we need to create a character pointer for to do this we have CSTR actually CSTR basically what is written as you can see here character star so it's returning in buffer so this is the buffer actually so i have converted that buffer now we can specify response data dot length that's it so we have now it's correctly implemented now it's correctly implemented now if i do this and if i run okay binding error why binding error i told you uh, let's define port number 303 uh, let's copy this thing uh, listening here is a listening right let's add here because it's not meaningful okay now it's meaningful now let's run now code okay what happening okay 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 we cannot use like this we need to specify like this in c++ there is no something kind of thing okay let's stop let's stop let's run now ah it's listening right 303 port let's click on it as you can see i am getting the response i am getting the response hello if i change a uh, response from hello let's say sonu if i enter and if i do it uh, code is not compiled that's why if i compile its code but it will give binding error because port is already is you know okay it's fine it's not giving great so as you can see soon is my response so this is the basic uh server code i hope you understood about how internally servers are working so this is about whole about server how server are working i hope uh, i am able to uh, simplify the things um and uh, i able to make it uh, understandable so these are the steps uh, now you i guess you know 
how internally things are working so thank you for watching bye bye